Weekly vlog number 53 and 54. So to start with last week, all that really happened was I brought my dog into the vet and the meds are working. So he had another x-ray, his lungs are clearing up, his heart's still obviously big, but that's not going to just shrink down suddenly. It's going to take time for that to shrink down if it shrinks down at all. And I think the vet doctor actually tried saving me some money and that was a little cool because he called and he was like okay you're just gonna have to pay between 40 and 60 dollars for an x-ray it'll just be some quick tech thing you just bring him in get the x-ray and you can leave and we'll just call you with the results uh but what ended up happening is we went there he had his x-ray taken then we had to wait in the waiting area and after a little while had to go actually get them weighed so I think they're actually doing a full checkup and everything but they knew I was on SSI they knew stuff was expensive so I think they were really trying to just save me a little bit of money and do their entire job and do it in a way that they might be able to sneak and not let other people know that hey they're giving me a better deal than what you normally have so I think he had a full checkup and everything as well because even the x-ray took about 15 minutes or so just to get done and the last time it only took around five so either way, uh, that vet doctor guy, freaking awesome that he did that, and it's awesome that everything's working out. And I just gotta give him meds each month. And apparently I can get them a lot cheaper if I get them from a different place, which is necessary. I know they get money when I get them from the vet, but I need to save money myself because I'm on SSI. So even though they saved me money by doing what they did, I really can't just go in and say, okay, well now because of that, I'm going to just buy these $60 worth of meds from you every month or so. Uh, because I actually have to give them more meds than normal because I'm giving them two water pills three times a day instead of what it started at was two twice a day. And I'm giving them two heart meds each day. So one when I get up, one when I go to bed instead of one each day so the actual cost has increased because i have to give them even more and as for this previous week the one that this video is really for because last week is already done uh this previous week this week itself i got a haircut finally got a fucking haircut and actually i think i did that uh, last week i don't remember when it was i think it may have been saturday last week saturday but just saying oh yeah i got a haircut woohoo wouldn't have extended that video long enough even now i'm barely under five minutes in audacity and i'm probably cutting out half of this stuff because it's just empty space where i say nothing or i'm repeating myself so it's actually more coherent but yeah i did get a haircut and the person who cut my hair fucked it up like crazy again it seemed all right when i was over there looked in the mirror it seemed fine Except when I got home, I started noticing, well, you just basically turned my face into a picture frame, and that's not a good thing. Used my hair to turn my face into a square. And it looked retarded. So I had to actually fix it myself, and I had to cut some off. Which then meant, oh, now it's not the right shape up top, and now it looks all fucking retarded. And I had to cut some more off. Oh, now it's a little crooked. Now I gotta fix that. Cut a little more off. Fucking few days just touching it up every once in a while. Eventually, I got it fixed. But I had to cut off quite a bit of hair that they should have done themselves. And it seemed like it was layered enough and thinned out when I was over there as well. But now it's obviously still thick. So they didn't actually thin it out properly either. Which is really bad for me because my hair is really goddamn thick. And when your hair is that thick, it feels heavy. So heavy that you can actually... If it's properly thinned out when you get your hair cut, it feels like you have no hair at all, even though there is hair obviously still there, but it feels that light if it's properly thinned out compared to what it is before the haircut. Next up is the D-pad on my controller. The D-pad on my controller is still pissing me off, so I opened it up, decided, you know what, it's pissing me off, I'm just gonna grind this little thing down because it's a retarded design. It's got this weird little point on it, and whenever you push a direction on the D-pad, all it does is it rolls on that point. So I grinded the point down, and it helped a bit, but it wasn't quite as good as I wanted it to be. So I opened it up one more time, grinded it down again, then instead of just testing it, I took my other controller, which is actually a backup controller, I took the D-pad out of it because it works perfectly fine, and I swapped it over to my new controller. So now my new controller has a perfectly fine working D-pad, and I put the other one that I grinded the tip down on in the backup controller. The backup controller is also pretty old. It's probably the first wired Xbox 360 controller I ever got, but its joysticks aren't fucking up like my last one was, which is what led me to get the new controller that I am using now. 
So now the black Xbox 360 controller that I have has a gray D-pad on it and the white controller I have has a black D-pad on it because I swapped them. And next up before the final thing, which I actually posted on Twitter and Facebook about, uh, the next thing is that I emailed Electro Voice and I have to say, what the fuck are you guys doing? I paid $400 for this mic, I paid $100 for the shock mount. And you can't even respond to a goddamn email and ask you why the thing's picking up so much coil line for my graphics card. Very simple question. I even used an example with my AKG Perception 220 because it tests that. It's not really picking up any of the damn sound from the graphics card. It's not picking up that coil line unless it's actually audible enough to where you can hear it. And even then it's picking it up as audio. It's not picking it up as some background, some white noise or some electrical interference or some shit. So I emailed you guys about that and you haven't responded and it's now been uh, over a week. It's actually been closer to a week and a half since I sent you the goddamn email and you haven't responded? What the hell's going on? Why the hell do you even have an area where you can have people email you for assistance, help, or anything really if you're not going to respond to the damn things? You would think with a microphone this expensive, one of the most expensive microphones there are in the regular consumer area before you actually enter up the professional grade shit, uh, even though this mic is probably considered professional grade, uh, but for one that is very popular, it's very expensive, you would think you would have some proper support, get some proper responses within a day or two, and it's been over a week and a half and you guys still haven't responded. And if you guys don't respond ever, then what the fuck are you doing? This is just bullshit. I want to know what the hell the mic is picking up the coil line for. And I don't know if you guys have any suggestion, some way to actually prevent it from being picked up. But you're not responding. So I don't know if I had to suggest someone get an electro voice, I would say... Well, just make sure your computer doesn't have any coil line, then this mic is a fucking awesome. By the way, you also want to make sure that you don't have to ever contact the manufacturer because they don't fucking respond with shit. So it's actually a lot harder for me to ever suggest an Electro Voice mic because of that, especially when you can get an AKG Perception 220 and for most people that actually works out really well. It emphasizes the nasally sound of my voice a little too much, which is why I got the Electro Voice one now. Otherwise, I'd still be using the AKG that I still have. I still need to get that sold, actually. Uh, but you're looking at a, a little situation where it's like, okay, what's the point of actually suggesting you go out and buy a $400 mic versus a $150 mic that actually comes with its own goddamn shock mount when you buy it? You don't have to buy the shock mount separate like I had to buy with mine. It comes with the damn thing. So basically, by comparison, you're looking at a $500 mic because you have to buy the shock mount separate for the Electro Voice RE20 that I'm using versus the mic that comes with the shock mount and everything on its own. If you remove that shock mount, then the mic would probably still only end up costing around, I don't know, 80 or 90 or maybe $100 because shock mounts tend to be a bit expensive. So the least you could do is respond to the damn emails. I do like the mic I have, but I want to know why the fuck it picks up coil line and my other one does not. And it picks up very horrible coil line. It picks it up as electrical interference, even if you don't hear it. And it is coil line. It's not my power supply like I was thinking it was because I went into a uh, game and I actually tested. Okay, let's check the frame rate and let's see how loud it actually picks it up. So I move where the coil line was just barely audible. Just running in Minecraft, huge fucking frame rate. Barely audible. It would pick it up and it would be a certain tone and quietness that would resemble how loud it was in the room and it would also seem to resemble and reflect the frame rate of the game. Then I would make it go quiet to where I can actually hear it, and there would still be electrical interference. This coil line would still be picked up by the microphone. Okay, so then I make it so it's as loud as I can possibly get the damn sound, so it's screaming in my goddamn ear, and it would resemble that, you know, sound like that when it's picked up by the mic. But when I hooked up my AKJ Perception 220, ran the same test, the only time it picked up any sound was when it was fucking screaming in my ear and it picked it up as audio. It wasn't getting electrical interference. So I asked, well, okay, well, if I get a cloud lifter, would that actually help? Uh, would that then power through because you have to actually use phantom power if you use a cloud lifter? Would the phantom power just push through and sort of purge this electrical interference out? Uh, is that why it's not getting picked up by my AKG Perception 220? Or what the fuck's going on? I want to know what, why my RE20 is picking up so goddamn much interference from the coil one. And they just didn't respond. Pisses me off. Anyways, let's end that because I think I'm rambling, going in circles. 
the last thing, which I did mention on Twitter, which then posted to Facebook, is that I got a blue screen yesterday. I don't know what the fuck caused it. I did a disk check of my primary drive. I did a system file scan, which then actually said, ooh, corrupted files, and they're fixed. But after restarting my computer, I found, oh, it's just fucking Windows 10 files that I manually removed, so it doesn't force Windows 10 onto my computer. So I don't know if there were actually any corrupted files or not. Probably not. So I don't know what the hell caused it. And when I actually looked up information on the cause of the blue screen crash, all I could find was, oh, this is related to the FireWire port, which is the IEEE. -E -E. I think that was three E's. Fucking retarded trying to list that. The IEEE. -E -E. 1394 port, which I never use. I'm not using at all. It's apparently related to that. Uh, it was given the error system service exception, though it is also possible that it's caused by some sort of driver, uh, but mostly it looks like, oh yeah, it's probably from the fucking Firewire port. That's what I find the most when I look up. I mean, it's possible that uh, it is because I was actually playing the first Witcher game at the time that it happened and the game did crash before the blue screen so it crashed then I started the game up again after about 10 or 15 minutes I got a blue screen so it's possible that just because the game's old that drivers for a graphics card just said fuck it we don't know what the hell to do fuck it and caused the issue but I don't know. I've had one blue screen before on this current system with the hardware that I'm using now. And that was actually when I closed Sony Vegas Pro, and it was a memory spool header issue. Which basically means it can be caused by fucking anything. So I think actually all that caused that was Sony Vegas Pro being a bitch. So I don't know what the fuck's going on. Two different blue screens, possibly unrelated, very likely unrelated. I know that my hardware is faulty. This is pissing me off. It's just so much goddamn stress, and I gotta stop worrying about stress. And I was just finally getting into an area where I wouldn't be... Oh, I'm freaking out because I'm afraid that I'm going to get a graphics driver crash or a blue screen crash on my system because I've been dealing with problems for computer for basically two years because my last computer died about two years ago and then save up. Oh, now I've got a year where i got to figure out what the fuck's going on with driver crashes. Oh, now I've replaced hardware. Oh, it's still happening. Oh, I finally fixed the fucking problem. Oh, and I got blue screens. What the fuck, dude? <sighs> so much goddamn stress. It's just expensive. I don't want to deal with it. I'm going to try not to worry about it, try and ignore it, and I'll see what happens if I don't play the Witcher game. Uh, after I play it one more time, if I get that same crash when playing the Witcher game, the first Witcher, if I get that crash again while playing the first Witcher game, then I'll think, okay, it is directly related to that game, which means that's off the list for potential playthroughs, and I'll just have to play Witcher 2. Even though I don't play the first Witcher game because there's an incredibly different feel between each game and I like them equally. I may actually like the first Witcher game more than the second one though. It's just, I don't know, I just really like that fucking game. It's awesome. Both of those games are games that y you start playing you're like, I don't want to play this. But as soon as you actually get into it for more than a couple minutes, you're like, I don't want to fucking stop. I'm going to play. Get ready to lose life for hours and hours and hours because I'm playing this fucking game. They have... Very fucking strong atmosphere. Just this very hardcore RPG sort of element to it. And just, it's just, holy shit, I just really like them. They're awesome. So, I don't know, I guess I'll test some stuff. I don't think it's really a big issue. And I'll see what happens. Borderlands 2 will continue, don't worry about that. Still work on it. I haven't actually recorded that in about two weeks though, because I ended up skipping because I was working on some computer case design. I was actually building it in Minecraft. Then, I guess I'll show an image here of the design of it. Uh, I was working on this in Minecraft to actually make sure I can get it more accurate. So it's within 5mm accuracy. And uh, that just took a long goddamn time to do because I built a big ass case with each block. The reason why it's 5mm accuracy is because I just said, okay, let's make each block equivalent to a 5mm by 5mm by 5mm a little three-dimensional block. So a 5mm cubed little thing so I could actually determine how big this case is going to be. And that's how I got all those measurements as well. Uh, they're probably off, but if they are off, it's only off by that 5 millimeter difference. Because I couldn't really get any smaller than 5 millimeter. I could have, I suppose, treated each block as 2.5 millimeters, but that would just be fucking annoying, and that would be massive. And the thing is already pretty massive. So I spent my time doing that. 
And before I knew it, my sleep got a little fucked up and I wasn't awake enough during the night to actually record any Borderlands 2. But that's okay because I'm about two months ahead of schedule and I'm not really worried about falling behind or really anything with that game. So I'm just going to take my time, relax with it, and get some stuff edited and rendered and uploaded and just record when I'm next awake during the night. It's not really a big deal. As long as I get two recording sessions done every time I'm awake during the night, I can actually get ahead of schedule on the videos. Anyways, that is the end of this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to let me know with a comment, like, subscribe, and or a share. Also, one other thing, there has been a new subscriber uh, who's been leaving a lot of comments. Dude, you know who you are. Thank you for all that. It has been awesome seeing some activity on my videos and my channel. It was completely unexpected and you actually caused a view spike which is just incredible. The audience retention time has increased, the views have increased, and the overall amount of time watched has increased since you subscribed and started watching my videos and everything. And that's been freaking awesome to see. Uh, a very nice change because normally I'm just dropping or I'm staying even, and now I'm seeing a little bit of a raise. So yes, thank you for watching. It's awesome. Thank you. And anyone else who also happens to be doing the same thing, uh, and I'm just not realizing because I'm not commenting or whatever. Thank you too. Thanks to all everyone for watching. It's been awesome. I've been enjoying seeing green arrows instead of red arrows saying, fuck you, you're going downhill. Uh, I've been really liking this green arrows pointing up saying, yes, you're going uphill. You're getting some better stuff than you were over the last month. So awesome. Anyways, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.